But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. James 3.8. Welcome to the final episode of The Ultimate Doom. This is the easiest level in the episode by a country mile. It almost feels like a level from like episode two or something, but it's a nice little breather. I like this level, even though it's very small and very easy. Yeah, I think that's part of the issue too with this this episode that a lot of people have is like the the design is all over the place. It is. I will definitely say it, which is weird because if you reorganize these levels just a smidge, you can definitely make a good mountainous difficulty curve where it just goes up and you end with the hardest episode or the hardest level rather but they don't do that like some sometimes you'll get a really easy one sometimes you'll get a balls ass hard one what you're looking at is like 50 percent of this level like the, the whole thing is just half of it is this room like this should have been the intro yeah, this feels like a very good opening level. But instead, it decided to kick your ass with whatever they gave you to actually start with. Uh, the long-range shotgun? No, no, that was different. That was the second one, I think. Yeah. Now, that's an interesting project. Like, reorganize Thy Flesh Consume to make it a better difficulty curve. I guess that'd be a tier list in its own weird way. <laughs> Which one of these suck it? Which ones don't? You decide. I'll keep that in mind for my next tier list stream whenever I do one. Uh, that flashing is... gives me a headache. And here's the other half of the level. The exit is right over there. This honestly, it almost feels like it could have been the first episode of the whole game. Yeah. Yeah. I keep saying episode. Like, constantly I'm saying episode when I mean level. I think you mean map. Map. Meh. <laughs> if you really want to split hairs. This could have very well been the first M of the E. <laughs> It really does feel like the first level, like, you could have done this level with just a pistol and shotgun, but you're so jacked up with weapons now that it's nothing. Even if you weren't, it doesn't seem that threatening. I don't know why they have this, like, that button over there, lower that. Feels kind of pointless. Ah, shit. Oh, well, this is one secret. I'm pretty sure that little crevice down there is the second secret, and I'm pretty sure that's all for this epi for this level. Fuck. <laughs> epi level. <laughs> the epi level. There we go. Also, another berserk after every enemy's already dead. Maybe I should get these secrets in the order where they appear, rather than all the ones at the end. Maybe they shouldn't be so hidden. That's unruly evil. Very, very basic. Didn't seem that unruly, honestly. Yeah, no, that's a very calm evil, I'd say. Haha, <laughs> 420. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Luke 1630. This level's fine. It's uh, an another pretty basic Doom level, not terribly difficult. It almost feels like the episode just started here at the last level, and now this is the second level of the episode. Yeah, kind of. I'm already reorganizing it in my head of how I think it should be. It's... Oh man, it has a xylophone again. Yeah, it has a flying xylophone. I <laughs> love it. I'm trying to figure out what you were trying to do there. I think I forgot that I didn't have a key. Just don't remember how doors work. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy in particular. You know what? No, I I really do like this level. It's nothing special. I think it's just a really good ass Doom level. 
Doom 1 level, that is. <laughs> that xylophone almost lined up for when I turned around. <laughs> Hello! I'm Doom Guy, here for your Saturday morning entertainment. Just remember, kids, say nope to dope. <laughs> and say yep to schlepping off heads. Say yep to schlepping to your local drugstore. To buy Flintstones vitamins. <laughs> They're not from hell. They're from the 60s. They're so good, you think they're sinful. But don't eat more than one a day. Please don't. Otherwise, you'll get the shits. <laughs> I would know, I've tried. They're just too tasty. Thanks, Pinky. Saw the kill shot from that Pinky to that imp. Pinkies are strong and your friend. They're my friend when I have a chainsaw, and I hug him with it. They're not trying to bite you, they're trying to kiss you, and you won't let them. They're just really bad at it. They use too much teeth. <laughs> Very awkward kissers, yeah. They also unhinge their jaw when they do it. They, they, they just need lessons. They also just, just lack, lack. Like, they, they go in for the kiss and headbutt you on accident. Oof. It's just awkward, you know? Yeah, it's a shame, really. Like, you want to root for him, but also, it's just, it's just a problem. Lost Souls, on the other hand, giant assholes. Yeah. Now, seeing their placements in Doom 1 almost makes me forget how fucking annoying they are in literally every other Doom game. Mm -hmm. You'd think, oh, they don't seem so bad. They're just floating heads. They're not terribly, like, powerful, or they don't have a lot of health. Uh, just wait till Doom 2. They're, they're the bane in Doom 2. Whoa! Where, where the fuck did that one come from? I didn't see it. Straight from hell. Straight from, like, next door, I guess. I thought we weren't in hell. <laughs> Gotta make sure. I just want to... I just want to 100% a level without a fucking walkthrough. Is that so much to ask? The doom tradition of vigorously humping every wall you see. I love just opening the door to a weak enemy <laughs> and then just saying fuck him. It's, it's very sus. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so that's a good time to bring up that Doom literally has no sense of verticality. Everything is infinitely tall. So that barrel was may as well have been directly in front of that lost soul. Height is an illusion. In this engine, yeah. Death is inevitability. It's that BFG. There's a way to get it. Ah, uh, yes, the Bioforce gun. It's the bad friend, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of these zombies is Greg? All of them, really. They're all bad friends. You can just... You can actually just skip the entire uh, yellow key just by uh, running through this window here, which is how you get the BFG, which isn't even a secret. So you don't need to get this. But if you... I mean, if you don't have one already, then go ahead and grab it, I guess. That's it. Fine-ass Doom level. Not super hard. They will repent for their bad friendship. Said Abraham. Said Abraham. <laughs> for they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fucking hardest level in Doom 1. 
almost unanimously. Like, everyone definitely agrees. This level is really tough. It's a bit of an asshole. It's a huge asshole, actually, but you know what? I really like this level. In my opinion, this is the pinnacle of how to do a fairly difficult Doom level. Fairly as in not unfairly, not fairly as in relatively, because it's more than a fairly difficult game level. Yeah, fuck that wall. I wanted to get the Kako. When you were starting for a second, I thought, ladies and gentlemen, was part of the verse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I said what the number of the verse was. It's Psalm 13920. Psalm is long, dude. Says someone who's never read the Bible. <laughs> Man, I went to Catholic school, but I wasn't cool enough to actually go to any sort of mass. Because I technically wasn't Catholic and they didn't want me there. So me and my Episcopal buddy would just sit around in class, dicking around, nothing to do. Playing Doom. Uh, on the Catholic school computers. No, we just sit in the classroom. I don't even remember what we play. Probably some shit on the GBI, I don't know. One good thing about this level is that there's only three secrets and they're all really close to the beginning, so you don't have to worry about secrets after this point. And here's the... what? Here's the last one. That's how you trigger it. It's over here by these lost souls. Also, fond memories of that one kid in Catholic school who was super into Green Day and Limp Biscuit. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> that guy must have been a hero. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I got the wrong idea of what you were trying to say there. <laughs> if he was just in a green day, the Limp Biscuit should have been the tip off that he wasn't. Well, I mean, in Catholic school was the part. Like, when you're when you're raised that way, you take what you can get. Oh no! See, I went from public school and then I went to Catholic school for middle school, and then got asked to leave. So I went to public middle school and then <laughs> high school. <laughs> Cat, cat, right. cat, cat, Catholic high school. Hello, ass. <laughs> My. <laughs> Don't pitch me there. <laughs> he just turns around and goes, ladies. <laughs> so this level's kind of set up like a plus. What we just came from, like the beginning of the level, is one end of the plus. Here, over here, that this barren ass led us to is one other end. <laughs> and then there's like two other areas. You can see that wall over there, and then there's like a whole lava area there to our left. So Jacob, I'm going to take... Step back a sec. Do you mean a plus or a cross? A plus. Uh, okay. Because it's, like, it's not like the fucking center line is slightly up. It's like shaped like a plus sign. So, <laughs> Fuck you, too. Do, 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 no. Now we got the blue key. We can use that. That opens up the little door behind us if we didn't take that entrance. So, if we didn't already kill that Baron, he'd be coming for us now. So essentially, when you take a teleporter on a particular side, it will take you to the side of the plus that's behind you. So that's a good way to remember where you're going, but... In, in the heat of this level, you sometimes forget. So over there to your left, there's these little platforms that are lowered by keys. There's a lot of enemies and a lot of lava down there, but there's some essential shit in there, so you gotta make sure that if you can find a radiation suit, use it wisely, or just burn your ass while trying to progress. It's fine, you didn't need that ass anyway. You got a replacement. A replacement booty. A cyber ass. Stole from the cyber demon. I think I just telefragged something, I heard a... Yeah, see? Actually, you carved the buns off the Baron of Hell, and they're yours now. I don't know, the cyber demon has a juicier booty. <laughs> I don't quite remember the Cyber Demon booty, so I'll have to get back to you on that one. It's very defined. To be fair, so is the Baron of Hells. <laughs> that 
Pretty sure that Cacodemon died into the teleporter. I think it did. <laughs> so his corpse is just somewhere else now. I was on my way to work. <laughs> I mean, technically right. Also, just going back to the telefrag, I'm just reminded of, uh... Yesterday I was playing some co-op Doom with uh, some friends for shits and giggles. And it was really hilarious every time there was a level that started with a teleporter and all of us dipshits ran in at the same time. It was a fucking bloodbath. So, this level hasn't seemed too bad yet. Oh, look. Okay. Come back here, Cyber Demon. I need to look at your ass. <laughs> Bitrate's too low to tell. And... You know my rule, when I see a cyber demon, I kill it. I don't have a choice here. You have to kill that cyber demon in order to progress. And he is in a very inconvenient spot. Either he's hard to hit, or you're too close to him. There's not much leeway to where you can stand to fight him. And he, that is pretty much the sole reason why this is the hardest Doom 1 level. I mean, it's just generally trickily designed, but that cyber demon is the cherry on top. Ah, uh, good thing you got that. Yeah, it does have a, this level does have a BFG, so ah, <laughs> it doesn't help much. Sucks to suck, loser. Especially when you're that close to him. There's also an invulnerability spear, but I'm pretty sure I already used it. Even with the invulnerability spear, if you use it wisely, it's still really tough to fight this thing. Like, you, there's just no convenient way to stand where you can both hit him and not get hit. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. From this distance, a BFG is pretty much a, a fucking feather. <gasps> Whoa, that face. <laughs> yeah, it looked exactly how you felt. Oh my god. god sweet Bioforce God. Show your ass. Oh, got it, got it. We're good. Not leaving until you do. <sighs> I think you should hold on to your ass. With not a lot of health left, I've done it. Now just to get out of here. You done did it. I never leave this episode with a lot of health level. Fuck. Well, let's get out of here. The next level ain't no walk in the park either, and we don't have a lot of health for it. That's just that's just the way I play the next level, just always. Oh, that's fine. Death is inevitable. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, and with the beasts of the earth. And hell followed. Uh, fuck, that's not the name of the Bible chapter. Revelation 6 8. <laughs> yeah, your you buddies, the four horsemen. <laughs> ah, Jesus. That's unique. That's like the only time where you press a door and it just vanishes. It doesn't open or anything. That's a good jump scare. It's very disorienting. Ow, ow, ow. So, if you're like me and you always take a lot of damage at that Cyber Demon, there is a Berserk in this room that you're going to want to pick up so you get yourself back to 100 health. And then immediately lose all of it. Yep. I did not have the best run. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where the fuck those guys were. Now you know who the ones that you shot in the ass feel. Trap sprung, fucker. Well, this is affecting me, so fuck it. Ow, the shrapnel coming up through the floor. Fuck you. There we go. This is a good trap here. But I was prepared, except for that one. That one. Uh, there's something around that corner. I know it. Oh, wait. <laughs> does, that <cackle> <laughs> does 
It's that cacodemon I killed a minute ago. Never mind. There was something around the corner, you mean? Down there's a yellow key. How do I get it? Very carefully. I needed to open that lion head switch for some reason, even though it doesn't have any indication that it needs a yellow key. Oh, there's another vanishing door. This again really lends that kind of half-baked feeling. I feel like that was intentional, though. Though I... It may not be, because I don't think it ever happens again in Doom 1 or 2. But either way, it's a good jump scare. Might be a bit generous there. I think it's just Jack. I just have too much fun with this level to give a fuck. Yeah, no, that's fine. Again, like, there's no indication that it needs a yellow key. That we have to agree on, though, like... Give some indication here. Come on. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, once again, feels like some of this is a bit rushed. By the way, uh, something we haven't mentioned here, there's a relatively popular name in the realm of niche video games that got in pretty much his start working on Doom. He lent his creativity to both Thy Flesh Consumed as well as Doom 2. Uh, that'd be one American McGee. <laughs> Which, of course, I know most for his Alice in Wonderland games. Yeah. Yeah, he made quite a number of levels in Doom 2, and I think he made two levels. Two or three levels in Thy Flesh Consumed. Now, what else has he done besides Alice? Because I can't think of it. I think he's... I know he's done something else. I think he's worked on mobile games, kind of. Let me look up his... Gameography, if you will. By the way, fun fact, I, I generally didn't believe this at first, but American McGee is his birth name. Uh, he was a level designer, sound designer, and tools programmer for Quake. Cool. Co-producer for Hex and Beyond Heretic. Uh, he is currently working on the third Alice game, Alice Asylum, targeted for a 2021 release. Huh. Even though I haven't beaten the first American McGee's Alice because the game controls like shit on a PS3 controller. Which is a shame because the PS... Oh, granted, I prefer the PS4 controller. Fuck you, Baron. I think he's just made for keyboard and mouse, honestly. I need to play the PC version, but I have to buy it on Origin if I want to do that. Ugh. I used to not think American McGee was his name. I thought it was a company like National Lampoon. Oh. Uh, like National Lampoon's Vacation, American McGee's Alice. It definitely sounds like the same vein. I, I thought it was a handle like Suda51 or Swarry65. Yeah, like what kid names their, their son American? American's mom, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> or dad, or both. God, what a terrible name. That's that's unfortunate. I think it's kind of dope. Also, on Ultra Violence and Above, that Baron is a Cyber Demon. So, in case you haven't had enough Cyber Demon fun. Oh, here's... Oh, yeah. This is another uh, secret that you can't really access without no clipping. But it is possible. You can... On Ultra Violence and Above, you can have a Cyber Demon blast you onto that platform. But, of course, that's kind of an exploit. You can't do it, like, by yourself. And you, I'm pretty sure it's just flat-out impossible on Hurt Me Plenty and below. And you might die. Yeah, well, there's also an invulnerability sphere on the platform you're trying to get on. So, you got some time. There's a bunch of shit in there. And in there. I can use some of it. Just don't get squished. Ooh! Oh, that one tickled my nose hairs. Yeah, you did it. That level was fine. This next level is not particularly hard, but it is a good slaughter fest to kind of end everything off. Let's thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. Proverbs 5.9, the final episode, the fuck, the final goddamn fucking level of fucking doom. <laughs> final map. Final map, whatever. The final map for doom fucking. Oh. Yeah. No, that's H doom. Oh, look at all these weak boys that we can just slaughter. 
this is a very good stress relievey level because it's not it's not that hard it's got a lot of enemies but it's you're well equipped at this point to just fuck everything up though if your pistol's starting it's not terribly easy I thought you were genuinely attacking the wall. <laughs> okay, so that Kako was guarding that button that rose this little bridge. Did not mean to go into this voice, but I did it anyway. And pulling you out. Thank you. I'll be my doodah into oblivion. I feel like you can come up with better names. <laughs> Literally all of those A's were me accidentally hitting the A on that little keyboard that appears. I oh, was supposed to be LP, LP my, my dude. dude. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun to watch the gimps just fly. Because it's practically just a GIF flying across the screen. A jib jif, or a gib gif, if you will. No. It was mentioned in the thread that the reason that the gibs seem random is because it only happens when you overkill and that you do damage that is twice their health. Yep. And there's some enemies where that's pretty much impossible to do in one attack. And the reason that shotguns don't give enemies is because they're technically four tiny attacks happening all at once. What the? I guess more came in. Pinkies are just here to party. Party and make out. Come on. Exactly. Let them be. Make out at the party. One more. On ultra violence, these are barons of hell. So less chainsawable. I really regret not doing this in ultra violence. Yeah, yeah. So we have a dick load of BFG ammo, so that's all we're gonna use. Spider Mastermind, two shots, what a fucking pushover. Nothing in this fucking room is going to die by anything other than the BFG. We could just leave now. The exit does open when this when the Spider Mastermind dies. But there's still demons alive, dude. Yeah, come on, grand finale. Yeah. Never suffer a demon to live. It is a shame that the Spider Mastermind is such a piddly enemy. Yeah. She's a cool design. Uh, she's tough if you don't have a BFG, kinda. But, no. I know, I just found the Cyber Demon more threatening. Oh, definitely. The trade off is that the Spider Demon is more accurate because she has a hit scan weapon, but the Cyber Demon has more health. Also, we're just going to dive into here. Oh, hit my chin. Oh, that's, that's real great to read. On the fucking gravel and sand. Oh, this is the thing where if you cross your eyes, you'll get an image. Ah, all I see is a dolphin. <laughs> ah, I see another Baron of Hell ass. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where it is mentioned that that rabbit at the end of episode three was in fact doom, guys. Poor Daisy. Rest in peace, Daisy. You're too good for this world. But we keep her for good luck. And with that, that closes out the story of the ultimate doom. One of the most influential games of all time. And it's available on so many fucking things. Like your toaster. Like your fucking toaster. And they're available of a now decent port on all modern platforms. So I definitely recommend picking it up. If not just because it's a piece of history, but because I think it's aged wonderfully. It's still a ton of fun. I love Doom. And if you like shooters, you kind of owe it to yourself to give it a shot. There's a reason it helps spawn a genre. There's a reason they were called Doom clones for the longest time. Mm-hmm. Before a first-person shooter became a phrase, everyone just called them Doom clones. 
genuinely, I think episode one is still really good. At what point did they stop being called Doom clones? It's a good question. Probably around Half Life, maybe, because Half Life may have been different enough. Didn't have people talking to you in Doom. But Thorn, you were the you're the one here who has not played Doom before. How was your impressions on it? It looked fun. I do feel like I will get around to playing it at some point. I definitely recommend it, especially with a source port like ZDoom. Super easy to install, makes the game infinitely more modernized in every good way. Yeah, I've, I've had experience with trying to go back to old FPSs and it, it being damn near unplayable. I mean, I remember when I first bought Doom on Steam, I didn't install a source port or anything. I just played it all with keyboard. What I did was I used WASD to move and the left and right arrow keys to turn. And when you think of the arrow keys as an analog stick on like a controller, it's it's not so bad. You just got to kind of work around it a little bit. So it's like it's almost tanky. Almost. I mean, by default, it's almost it's definitely tanky, like forward to move forward, left and right to turn. Use a completely different button to strafe. It's definitely early times, but my, my point is installing a source port to not only make the game look better, run better, control better. It just why wouldn't you do that at this point? It does make me especially interested in some of the other FPSs that are similar, came out around the same time. Like we've talked about Quake. I kind of want to check that one out. You mentioned Hexen. I've had all of the old Hexens on Steam forever. I still haven't tried them out. Hexen's one I played for a bit. It's a lot more complicated. The levels are bigger, uh, longer, and it's a lot more hard to find your way around. I definitely prefer Doom, but Hexen has such a good aesthetic, and it's generally very fun. And I, it was also an id game, I'm pretty sure. So it's in the same realm. It's definitely fun. Let me check to make sure. Yeah, of these types of games, one of my personal favorites is always Blood. Uh, which, that was a build engine game, and actually one the first build engine game to have rooms on different Z-levels in the same spot. Yeah, the build engine was, of course, the engine that helped build but not only, like, Blood, but also games like Shadow Warrior and Duke Nukem 3D. Duke Nukem 3D is what spawned the build engine, yeah. Yeah, that's the also the only game that I've played on the build engine, and it's very good. Of course, Duke himself is dated as fuck, but... Oh boy. Oh, incredibly. But, I mean, the game itself is really fun. Just looking up and down is a little disorienting. Yeah, I, I highly recommend Blood. It's it's a bit of a fucker. It's also incredibly edgy, but I, I think it's really good. It's edgy in a fun way, unlike Duke's Dukeness or like... Or Dickness. <laughs> Duke's Dickness. Ugh. Sounds like a workout DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get down with the Dickness. Welcome to Duke's Dickness. Today we're gonna bust those glutes. Today we're gonna steal those balls. <laughs> First you put the workout mechanism, which I have not come up with a name <laughs> with. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another game I want to bring up. Uh, it's a modern game, but it's very heavily inspired by old school FPSs like Doom, and I think more especially Hexen. It's Project Warlock. I've played a ton of that. So like, if you like the old school shooters, that one's worth looking up on Steam. Project Warlock, let me see that. Ooh. Ooh, I like the look of this. I'm going to have to look at that. This looks awesome. It's even got a little face. Just like the old school shooters. Oh, this looks great. I'm going to have to play this like when we're done with this video. Yeah, and it, it doesn't... It's not problematic like a certain other old school style shooter. Which shan't be named. Because I don't know what you're talking about. It's for the best. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, guys. That's Doom. Tune in probably next week. And we'll get started on Doom 2. See you then. Double Doom. Wait, hang on. Doom 2. Doom harder. Double Doom. Now you gotta double the reverb, so it just sounds like a coin dropping across the nation. Double Doom! There we go. Then we'll get around to my favorite Doom game. Live free Doom hard. Golden Doom. <laughs> See you next week.